Okay, today I'm talking on uh, animal intelligence. Uh, I have a few references that if anybody is interested uh, to get a couple of good books I have, one in particular by Franz DeWall, W-A-A-L. Are we smart enough to know how smart animals are? Very good book. And another one by Nancy Costaldo called Beastly Brains. That's also a very good book, short book. On, uh, if you like to, uh, if you're interested in animals, animal intelligence, especially animals in their habitat, there's a couple of good programs uh, on PBS station. On Wednesday night, there's Nature, and right now it's gone to Spy in the Wild. So they got some animal disguised like the animal they want to look at with a camera or an eye. That's a pretty good program. It's one of my favorites, and certainly Nature is too. <clears throat> Again, Wednesday at 8. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay, now the person that studies uh, the behavior of animals in their habitat is called an ethologist. That's not somebody who trains animals to do tricks. They observe the animals uh, and maybe do some experiments. Essentially, you watch the animals with how they react to certain things. And there's such a thing as an encephalization quotient. EQ of animals. That's some kind of a convoluted co formula that compares the, ma the mass of the brain to the mass of the body as a means of trying to judge intelligence. And the second a very important one, if you ask me, uh, is the number of folds in the brain. The more folds, the more neurons you have. The more neurons you have, you send information through the central uh, nervous system. Okay, here's some EQs. Uh, humans are, of course, at the top since we designed the EQ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, humans jail the higher. Dolphin's the second smartest on the planet. Oh. And orca, which is just another whale, you know, the killer whale. Those are all the same. Uh, they're just, dolphin's just a small whale. And uh, orca's a medium sized whale. But anyway, uh, they are second smartest. The chimpanzee and then the rhesus monkeys. The elephant's pretty smart. And then comes the dog and the cat and the horse. Now, this is the smartest dog by EQ. Now, I, I saw several lists of smart dogs. The first five of these appear on every one. And the other, the bottom four, mostly on, on these. So I just kind of piled it all together and came up with this. On every list I saw, the very top is a border collie. That, so I assume that that, that I believe, is the smartest of all dogs. You know, they herd sheep and they do everything. It's amazing. German Shepherds, of course, are smart. And the, and the Labrador Retrievers are smart. Okay, next slide. And then come the dumbest dog. <laughs> Again, it's a list of a list of dumb dogs. <laughs> Not on every single list. Not on the <laughs> but at the very top of every single list I saw is that Afghan hound. That beautiful dog, I guess doesn't think very well. The mascot, that huge dog, is Marmaduke, you know. Is, is not very bright either. I was really shocked to see the hound dogs not being very bright, like a beagle and a basket. I thought they were pretty good. And I was very disappointed at the bulldog being dumb, huh. since that's my favorite dog. I never owned one, but, but that's what the dog I really like. That's the only dog I know of that's got real care. problem of judging people just think that animals do things by instinct. Uh, the problem of judging the intelligence of animals, we do it from a human perspective. Now, keep in mind that every animal has evolved for survival. That, you know, like, like they say, squirrels can't count to ten. They don't need to. But neither can we go bury a thousand nuts and then go retrieve them six weeks later. We don't need to, you see. So you can't judge an animal based on uh, what we can do. So uh, you have to judge the intelligence of animals 
from the animal's point of view. What does he need to have to survive? Okay, next. Uh, hunting, cats are better than dogs and better than humans. And uh, but math, we're better than dogs and better than cats. I don't know, I guess dogs can do some, some dogs can do some kind of action. And then, which is smarter, cats or dogs? That's like asking a carpenter, which is a better tool, a hammer or a screwdriver? You can't tell on this, it depends. On the basis of neurons, that humans have 16 billion, Cats have 300 million and dogs 200 million. That makes the cats work. But on the basis of uh, the EQ, the dogs turn out to be smart. So they're about a tie. Cats and dogs are about the same. Uh, and primates. The next one. Oh, this, uh, this, what we're going to do now is take a look at certain groups of animals. Uh, and discuss uh, the certain animals or groups based on uh, human traits. And I, oh yeah, I wanted to mention before we get started, there were two things that got me interested in this, two uh, events in my life. I always thought, you know, I never thought animals were very smart, except uh, we had a cat, and uh, my, son, when my son was 10 years old, he had one of these fast car things, you put tracks together, and we have lived in a, a split level house, so we had a staircase of about I don't know, seven or eight stairs. And he put these tracks together and, and lined them up down the stairs and it runs fast car down. Cat saw that. Of course, the immediate pounced on the car. So that was kind of cute. Everybody thought that was cute. But at the, about the second or third time, as soon as my son started to put the tracks together, the cat got ready in the pounce position. Oh. So he knew what was coming. And I thought, hmm, this cat's doing a little future thinking. Then, even worse than this, or better, however you look at it, was uh, my daughter's dog, uh, a black, I mean, a chocolate Labrador. And I said to I take it out for a walk. I said, oh, Zoe, would you like to go for a walk? Gets up and goes to the, goes to the door. Okay, that, that's no big deal. Any dog would do that. But then we got over, when I got over there with Gina, we looked around and I said, I don't see his leash. You know where his leash is? We all be familiar with the yeah, and, and uh, we were looking around and can't find a leash. Dog went away. So I thought, well, I guess we're not going for a walk. Came back to the leash. <laughs> uh, to me, that was spooky. To this day, that was spooky. I think about that. So I said to my daughter, this dog understands English. She says, oh, yeah. She said, and it rattled off a whole bunch of things that the dog does. So anyway, that, that got me interested that these animals are not as stupid as you think. Okay, let's see, we have, okay, we're gonna look at some of these traits, human traits as it comes to animals. Next slide, dolphins. Uh, Self-aware, they, they pass the mirror study. They know who they are when they look in a mirror. And they did this, some experiments, they put some ink spots on them, put them in there, they saw themselves, and they would go back and keep examining that. And then uh, when they use invisible ink, they'd go to the mirror, didn't see anything, and then go back, so they're obviously aware of themselves. Uh, they communicate with each other with high-pitched sounds. Uh, and th this is an interesting one. If they, they, they cooperate with each other. Wait a minute. Yeah. Hmm? the dolphin thing again? You put a, you put a mark on the dolphin yeah. that the dolphin can see. Yeah. And, and mirror. And the dolphin looks at himself in the mirror. Or herself. Yeah, correct. Because female dolphins are smarter. <laughs> that may be. And then what? Then and then it goes back and keeps looking at the at that spot. And if you put an indelible ink spot that he can't see or she can't see, you mean they, invisible? Invisible. Oh yeah, invisible. <laughs> With a, no, not indelible. Yeah, invisible. Sorry. Then uh, they go to the mirror once, then don't see anything of interest, and go don't go back. Well, how do you know what that dolphin is thinking? I don't know. All I know is that... <laughs> I mean, if I say, hey, look, there's a dolphin with a weird thing on it. That's... You know, yeah. it's, not, it's not thinking that's me. It's a weird dolphin. That comes back up there and is again. Now, when it's got an invisible spot, it doesn't... Yeah, know that's that. just another dolphin. Doesn't know it. Is. Okay. The, 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 all I can tell you is the ecologist concluded that those dolphins are aware of themselves. Oh, 
received them. Okay. And, and this on this basis was called the mirror test. Uh, they got here something in where they cooperate. Uh, they see a school of fish. Whales do this too. Uh, they see a, 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 a school of fish. They get air in their lungs and they go and swing them around, swim around the school and let out all kinds of bubbles so that the, the fish don't know what's happening. They, they can't see anything out. Then after they got it all covered with bubbles, they dive in for the prey, for the kill. And so that's a way that they hunt. That shows some future thinking and obviously some reason. Um, I think everybody heard dolphins are known to save humans from shark attacks. And uh, dolphins recognize, I say, dolphins recognize us as you, as dolphins. We just don't recognize them as humans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. This is dolphin are doing some pain. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what this other one the mirror study is at the top. Oh, yeah, the mirror study. There's a do dolphin looking at himself yes. or herself, and one's doing some pain. Okay. Uh, and the bottom slide says Did you know that dolphins are so smart that within a few weeks of captivity, they can train people to stand on the very edge of the pool and throw yep. them fish? Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, oh, but I'm probably talking about primates. Here's the rhesus monkeys. Uh, they had an experiment where we were taught to use uh, money to buy food, so they give them tokens. And they were using the tokens to buy food. In the first case, uh, the salesperson uh, sold uh, some item of food for a token, and occasionally threw in a second item for free. Like, like a bogo, bogo. Oh, okay. and then uh, and, and the monkey, the monkeys could use these, but they had a choice. They could use the uh, tokens to buy tastier food if they wanted. They didn't. They went with the first one because they got the extra. So they're doing the sales pitch. You got something extra on that. Uh, they didn't save their tokens, and then they stole from each other. <laughs> Next. Oh yeah, the, the, these are called lexigrams. That's, what was on the previous slide? Did I have anything that I wanted to introduce? No, no, okay, well, all right, next, next, next. Uh, they're out of order, I think. Are they? Yeah, both of them, one after this. Okay, so we'll look at this one first, and then I'll say, let's show the lexigram. Yeah, okay, here's a, a chimp uh, arranging numbers in order, and down there, he's using a lexigram. Now you can show the lexigram, and I'll tell you what he did. I can. I looked at this thing. And I said, I don't know how I ever used such a thing. The chip was taught to use these for words. Okay, and he point to this and the point to that, and somebody who, who uh, knows this sort of thing could interpret what the chip was saying. So they had a big flood, and the chip, after watching the flood, went to the lexigram and pointed out a big water, saying that he recognized that there was a flood. Okay, now let's try the next. Okay, here we go. At grade eight, uh, they passed the mirror test. Uh, they're all aware of themselves, all of the apes. Now here's another one to show with future thinking and how to use tools and other, other that, uh, features that we showed before. Uh, uh, a chimpanzee, female, was observed carrying her baby, a chimp, and a rock on her back. After a mile or so, came upon on a flat rock, and then the rock on her back was taken and used to smash nuts against the flat rock to feed herself and her baby. Now it shows some future thinking and some reasoning power and the use of tools. Okay, next. Elephants. Oh, I'll get another one before I get to elephants. Uh, a gorilla was observed going to the edge of a river they wanted to cross, went back, broke off a twig from the tree that was the same height as, as he was or she was, 
and then use that to gauge the depth of the water to walk across the river. That was seen. Now that, now that shows some reasoning, Bob. <laughs> Is it an elephant, you say? No. No, it's a gorilla. A gorilla. A gorilla. They broke out. Broke a piece of twig from a tree that was his own height. Did, did they film it going across? They, they observed it. I don't know whether it was filmed. It, uh -huh. was, it was observed. You don't know whether he went just straight across the street? No, I don't know. He was using it to... <laughs> did, did, did what difference does it make, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> what difference does it make? He was using it to see if he could go through it. Okay, next, dogs. 
So honeybees, that's where we go, honeybees next. Honeybees, I'll try to show them that. They communicate with each other. They first they find the food source, nectar. Then they return to communicate to the uh, to the rest of the bees in the hive. They use the sun's position as a guide to waggle its body in the direction of the food, food source. Now, and this is I didn't know. For every 100 meters from the beehive, the bee will uh, waggle for an additional 76 milliseconds. Whoever made that measurement, I see, got my admiration, I'll tell you that. <laughs> 76 milliseconds. Okay, and then uh, the more the food source, the longer the dance lasts. And finally, they receive directions and the rest of the colony can fly to the harvest, uh, uh, to harvest the newly found uh, supplies. So even honey bees communicate with each other. May I interject something? Yeah. I watched a video of a honeybee that had fallen into the honey. Mm -hmm. And it climbed out and sat there and all the other bees came along and cleaned it. Mm. For like an hour, bees just kept mm. coming and cleaning their friends so that it didn't die. Oh. <laughs> Empathy on the part of honeybees. <laughs> Okay, let's take a look at the next, uh, yeah, oh, pigs. <laughs> but I kind of get this out of order. How did I get it out of order, Mike? No, it's not good. Yeah, okay, I got the pigs. They can jump hoops, they can bow, they can stand up, they can spin, they can roll uh, off rugs, they can herd sheep, close and open their eyes, I command, play video games with a joystick. And uh, they're, they're actually cousins of whales and hippos. Huh. Yeah, they can use a mirror to find hidden food. They cooperate with each other. Learn complex combinations of symbols. They get through mazes. Got yeah, long-term memories are good. They're about intelligent, about equal to chimps. Did pigs show up on that first list of the Q IQ test? Yeah, they uh let's see. Yeah, they were I don't remember. We'll have to go back and see. But they they're about they figure they're about uh the equivalent to chimpanzees for in intelligence. Okay, let's see the next slide here. There the pigs ain't smarter than a dog, which she is. She is. And I don't know what this, oh, that's a... The puzzle. Oh, okay, this is a big, working on a puzzle, I guess. I can't see that. Oh, I see it now, yeah. Yeah, okay, let's see the next slide. Okay, we're on the birds. I wanted to say, uh, say something about dogs. Apparently, before I get on the birds, uh, an interesting story about a dog. Um, two stories, they, they, they show jealousy. So they had two dogs and the, the, the ethologist shook hands with one, gave it a treat, shook hands with the other, gave it a treat. They repeated that a couple of times. Then shook hands with one and gave it a treat, shook hands with the other, didn't give it a treat. Shook hands with this one, gave him a treat, tried to shake hands and this one uh, wouldn't shake hands and it walked away. <laughs> so they, they, uh, they showed jealousy. Uh, and this is another story that's true. Uh, apparently, a woman in Brazil, uh, by, uh, her name was uh, Lucia de Souza. She named this dog Lily. The dog lived in, is just a wild dog, lived in a junkyard. And would come every day at a certain time, and, and this woman, uh, Lucia, who was a dog lover, made up a great big bag of food, gave it to the dog. The dog carried it back to the junkyard and then shared it with her pups. Uh, some chickens, a mule, and a dog. An another dog, and a cat. I shared all that food, and then the next day would do the same thing. Eventually, uh, the woman went to the junkyard and got the, all the pups adopted out. Still, 
the, the dog came for its food, went back and shared with the, the other animals that were living in the junkyard. So that story's worth telling, that was observed. Now we're gonna talk about birds. The smartest birds are these uh, corvids, that, that, which include, that group includes crows, ravens, jays, magpies. Also intelligent parrots and macaws. They have brains about the size of a nut, but they got a tremendous number of neurons in those brains. A great many folds, lots of neurons. So they're fairly intelligent. Now the corvids exhibit future thinking. They plan for the future. I'll give you examples of this. They exhibit a sense of fairness. Crows and ravens can solve problems. And they remember, they fashion tools, they understand the Archimedes principle. Okay, let's see how what they do. Uh, future thinking, that they get food, say, from two sources at different times, so A and B. So if they got food from A, they won't eat it all, they go bury some in B. And when the food comes from B, they don't eat it all, they'll bury A just in case something happens that they won't get it. So they got down both spots. So that, they're known to do that. Then there's a story of fairness, which is a nice, just a hard, kind of a heart rendering story. The, uh, the little girl uh, fed the uh, crows. She got a bird feeder, fed the crows. The crows would come every day and eat. And in return, the crows would fly away. They'd come back and they'd pick up things that they saw might be of interest to the girl, like little trinkets, they might find an old ring, an old bracelet, a nice shiny stone, and bring it back to the girl. So it shows a sense of fairness, and it was uh, and that symbiotic effect back and forth uh, with the, the girl and the crows. They can solve problems. Give a crow a wire, for example, and some food down at the bottom of a tube that it can't reach with its beak. They're known to, to bend their wire into a hook, put it down with their beak, fish out the food. That part, is, they're known to do that. Uh, they got a memory. They can fly south, stay, stay in the warm for a while, come back and, and wind up in the same bush that they started from. And then, this is an interesting about the Archimedes principle. The experiment is done where the uh, food is floating on top of water, but the, the, in a tube or some sort and the crow can't get at it. So the crow, more than one, go and get stones, drop it into the water, and raise the water level. Keep doing that until it can reach the, the food. And that's that was known to that. So they understand the Archimedes principle. Wait a minute, what is the Archimedes yeah, principle? About a, a, body, <coughs> a body in water tends to sink until it displaces its own weight in water, and then it floats from there on. So we kept dropping stuff that was that wouldn't float and raise the the level of the water. Uh, oh yeah, they, they taught the crows to use a, a particular tool to get at food. And then they put the, some food out the next day with several different tools. And they would go to the one that they were taught originally and use that to get the food 24 hours later. That would be a choice. Uh, Monkeys have not been able to do that. They said in the same thing firm. So the crows are maybe as smart as monkeys. Anyway. Crows are very good at stealing sandwiches out of golf, <coughs> golf carts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they used to hang around the, the uh, staging area, the golf course, when you pull in and go and pay your. And if you had food in your cart, like we can get a sandwich. The sandwich would be gone. We'd see the crows flying off them in a bag. I said, what is that? Crow? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is my peanut butter sandwich. Ah. I always wonder what those crows are doing hanging around that staging area. <laughs> anyway, now that you've learned that birds are intelligent, next time someone calls you a bird brain, you can consider it a compliment. Yeah. Okay, I think that uh, ends my talk. A little faster than I expected.